Welcome to another edition of the Dakotans Election Central, where we are continuing our comprehensive coverage of the 2024 North Dakota election cycle. I'm Jonathan Starr. Today, I am joined by the current District 6 Secretary and candidate for House, Colette Kramer. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Jonathan, for having me. Absolutely. (laughs) So let's jump into the deep end and let's talk. I asked this to somebody and I think it's an interesting question. Okay. Okay. What high school did you go to? Towner High School. All right, Towner High School. Towner, North Dakota. So mm-hmm. let's roll it back a couple of years. Go Cardinals. I meet you when you're in a junior in high school. Okay. Who am I meeting? Um, You are meeting an outgoing, fairly confident young girl who has plans for her life. Okay. Okay. And... um. Are you one of the ones, the troublemakers in the school, or are you? I graduated toward the top of my class. Good job. But I was not a studious student. It just came out. So I wasn't a troublemaker, but I wasn't a goody two shoes either. (laughs) I don't even know what you say. (laughs) You were not the teacher's pet. I was not the teacher's pet. Maybe one teacher. Did you you enjoy like uh, going out and? Dirt biking so, or, get, go, get, oh, or, or don't, I don't even want to go what we did, but small town <laughs> North Dakota. Yeah. Yeah. We, you know, drug main a lot back and right, forth, right. went to the diner for snacks and burgers or whatever. I was a waitress at the diner. So yeah, we hung out there, um, played video games. Of course, Pac-Man's my favorite asteroids <laughs> at the local, uh, pizza peddler and, um, just hung out with friends. Yeah. We did, you know, you did a lot of cruising Maine back then. Okay. Okay. Maybe some. That yeah. was the good times. It was. It was. Th- so did you always have an interest in politics? Um, I would say yes to some extent. I always had an interest, but I, um, we have nine children. Okay. So, you know, there's a time when you're a mother and home and busy and you keep track of things, but you don't have time to get out and do things. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. And then when something around you affects you and you want to get more involved, that's kind of what threw me into the ring head right. first and yeah, jumped in and, and here we are. And here we are. So <coughs> continuing in the thread of your high school days, if Clet then was able to see Clet now, would she expect her to be where she's at? I don't know. If Cause you said you had goals, right? Right. I had goals. I had plans. Um, most of them were family. I wanted to get married, have children, yeah. raise a garden, ride horse, can cook, stuff like that. Those. So, right, I did, but I didn't, I don't think I ever saw this in my, yeah, no, my young Colette's future. Right. No. Nope. It's interesting how life works, right? It is, it is. So, we, we start there. It's an interesting way to begin an interview, but, but I think it's interesting as we get to know you. Now, now I'll break it down. Who are you now? Who are you today? Um, who am I today? That's yeah. a good question. Because, once again, with my small town, you know, where was I back then? I was blessed to grow up when I did and be yeah. raised, you know, in a small town where we ran around and played and your mom whistled and you came home for supper. And we, I grew right. up in the country and we moved to town when I was 13, I think, or whatever. And wow. you had the local swimming pool that you hung out with and, you know, everybody knew everybody. And I could, I could have went through town and pretty much told you everybody's house, Yeah, you know? That's and neat. so as compared to now where you don't know and we're a yep. little bit more mixed and yeah. melting pot or whatever you want to call it. But so uh, back then I was kind of content to be where I was and, and keep right. going and, you know, go off to college and come back and raise a family. So yeah. I got all that accomplished or whatever. And now, now it's like, I have my children getting older and you, you, you see things happening and now I'm, still a mama bear and I want to go fight for my children and my Absolutely. grandchildren. Right. So that's where it kind of just flowed together with that. Cause th- what's the next step in, in protecting the future? Yeah, basically. Absolutely. So well, what was the deciding moment for you that said, I mean, first you're involved in district six as a secretary. So you're involved in leadership there. What was the first decision for you? Like, Hey, I, I'm going to go ahead and make this step and get involved in politics in a more active role. Right. So uh, even getting involved as secretary, it's like, we need to be, it's, it's, I can't go around because I did a grassroots, you know, kind of rally at the Capitol um, the one year. And you can't go around asking people to get involved and to do things if you're not willing to step in yourself. So then you kind of think, oh, man. And Reed and I, Reed's my husband. He's the district chair. 
um, we kind of both knew it like, okay, it's going to be either you or me. Yeah. And currently, uh, we came to the conclusion that it was my, I was more capable, not capable, but yeah. more able to do it at this time in our lives. Yeah. So it was just like, yeah, if I'm going to say, Jonathan, you need to get involved. I'm going to look in the mirror and I'm telling Colette, you need to get involved too. So right. that's kind of when we, we stepped up. Um, Sean Vita retired. We had an open spot, you know, somebody needed to replace him. And, and as district chair, he, we started calling around. He did. I'm his secretary. So basically, yeah. Uh, yeah, we're working together, trying to, you know, find people to run and, and represent the values that we want presented from district six. We're yeah. a rural community. And, and so, and we have a really good executive committee. So, you know, they're coming up with ideas and I'm, you know, every one of them should run. I'll throw that at you guys. Um, <laughs> Should should run or be ready to because with term limits, now that we have eight years, we're gonna have to find somebody else. Even if I win, if I don't, and maybe maybe if I don't win, maybe I'll be back running in eight years because right. somebody else needs to you know move out or a bit. But yeah. we're gonna have to as citizens step into the role of fulfilling those seats when term limits you know. So you're just gonna hand the baton to your husband at the end of eight years? Yeah, I don't know about that. Maybe we'll both be running. It'll <laughs> be Kramer and Kramer in, in the two house and, seats. And we'll have your son in there. Yeah. So Kramer, Kramer, Kramer. Kramer, Kramer, Kramer. Oh, they'll make easy ballots to, or easy <laughs> signs to make. Yep, vote Kramer. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> just one name. Yep. One name. Very so. interesting. Um we you brought up term limits and we were talking about that a little bit beforehand. Was term limits implemented correctly for North Dakota? Um, I still, I agree with term limits. I'm full on board because, uh, I believe we should be citizen led in legislature and that's, um, kind of been abused, I think in past year. And it's because we've been lazy. Like I don't, I don't really want to do, you know, this job, but I feel we need to serve as citizens of our state. So that part is with the term limits, it's going to, it's going to, demand that people get more involved and, and serve. And so should it have been longer? I think maybe 12 years would have been better. Yep. But like if you've been in there for 20, 30 years, <clears throat> I do not believe in that. So uh, there's a balance that should have been. And, you know, I had a legislator tell me we don't need term limits. You get voted out at the ballot box. But if there's nobody running against you, it's hard to get voted out. Right. And so we need people to step up and just have a healthy competition yeah. And let the voters decide, which is terrible because a lot of people don't get to know who they're voting for. So basically, it's just a random right. chance, actually, who get does get elected. Which is crazy. It, it probably brings you to a lot of people voting based <laughs> off the letter next to names, which mm-hmm. is an interesting thing. Brings segues into the <coughs> current state of the Republican Party. So in North Dakota, um, it's been an interesting year for the Republican Party. Yeah, it's been an interesting probably four years. Yeah, it's been what is it? Interesting four Three. years. Yeah. Since 2021 or so. 2020. 2020. Yeah, I think, it, I think COVID, it. yep, Biden, a lot of the restrictions that were put on us, kind of people got, you know, upset, yep. rallied, now wondering what their government's doing. And so it wasn't so much. Um, your, your representatives that got you frustrated it was the way of the world or things that were happening in the world and so then people started paying attention i think so now we have a lot of turnover like the effects of the movement that started four years ago is really starting to be felt um we there's a changeover in the chair for the republican party there's there's changeover in leadership now as the governor steps down that's not from 2020 but it's happening now um and so it's created a lot of other change question for you is this right now with the fighting that's going on within the party with everything that's going on is the republican party still the party of stability current day stability in the state or is there should people be a little bit concerned if you're in support of the republican party that maybe things are the wheels are starting to come off the bus so I don't think the wheels are coming off the bus. I think people are kind of fed up with the political aspect of the Republican Party where, yeah. you know, you're rubbing elbows to advance or are you talking to the people? You know, <clears throat> are you listening to the people too? Because that's when people get a little, you know, upset. Are you going to, you know, do what the governor wants? Or are you going to do what your constituents want? And that's, and it's, you know, even further than that or whatever. So it's hard to, Hard to know with the rift in the Republican Party. 
a healthy debate is good. Like Great. when our founding fathers sat down, did they sit down for 24 hours, sign the declaration and move on? Everything was peaceful. There was Everything no was, yeah, they had, you know, mimosas in the morning yeah. and whatever. No, Everyone I mean, they upset. debated and yeah. they fought and they, right. you know, tried to come up with what was best for all of us. So you and I should be, if we don't agree, we should be able to get in this room and we should be able to hammer it out in the bitter end right. without even, you know, me giving in or, you know, we should come to a, it's not a compromise. It's, it's. It's to find out what's best for us as a nation, us as a state, us as a county, us as, you know. And so I enjoy the Republican, uh, I embrace, I should say, you know, some of the stuff that's going on because people are getting involved. When Reed and I went to our, I went to, Reed went before me or whatever, but I went to my first uh, district uh, meeting or whatever, the endorsing convention, there were probably 30 dues paying members. And those 30 dues paying members decided who was going to represent us in Bismarck yeah. because nobody ran against him in the Republican Party. Right. So you voted Republican or Democrat in yeah. the general. Right. Because yeah. you didn't even have to, you know, camp. You didn't have to campaign in the primary because you were the only Republicans running for three spots. Right. And so this last uh, February, uh, we had, oh, about, I want to say 167, but it was, uh, you know, over 160 people. Dues, dues paying members that showed up to vote. That's crazy. And so, yeah, is that because somebody said there's a rift in the Republican Party and we need to do something? Or is that because I sat at home one day thinking I need to get involved right. and I want to know who I'm voting for and I want to know what they're doing in Bismarck and, you know, it's up to me to do that. So it's personal responsibility for each one of us so to some- find out who's running, Yeah. what they're standing on, and, right. you know, should I vote for them? Some might say the rift in the party comes from people like that that are beyond the 30 that were there that are finally getting involved. Yeah. And, and, and so really it just comes down to people asking more questions, and that, that's not always comfortable and maybe... No, maybe that, and that, that, was, that was a problem. Stuff. You're like, oh, so how long have you been involved in the party? Yeah. Well, does that make you a better person if you've been involved longer or if you were doing other things or, you know, it took you a while to come around? Because I, I mean, I'll give Biden a lot of credit because he got a lot of people mad and he's still making them mad, you know? And so people are, they want to get involved and they want to know what's happening too. Yeah. We're we're probably staying on this longer than I intended, but (laughs) but it's not your fault. It's my fault. Um, You said, you know, how long have you been in the party? But it's like, yeah, I may have only been active in the party recently, which if you're interested in getting involved in your local district, do it. Um, Definitely. But I was still probably helping get you into office or help, you know, because you still, they still need votes at the primary. They still need votes. And that's part of what you were still showing up and doing. So even if you weren't in that active spot, you were still voting and supporting. Correct. Hopefully. And so, well, and here's the thing to me, because when I, was voting, I was voting Republican. And I just thought a Republican would have my values. And then you started saying, okay, so what do Republicans stand for? And here's the platform. Well, some legislators don't think they have to follow the platform because that's just, you know, that's kind of a guide or whatever. And, you know, they don't vote the platform and they don't look to the platform because it's not really how things are done, Colette. You know, I've been, you know, you get told. And so that's, I think the Republican Party that I believe in is more what's written on paper. Yes, that is the guide. And even the resolutions that we were going to pass at the state convention, um, it's they're not law. They're a guide. They're, they're an offering from yeah. the state, you know, delegates, basically, to the legislators about these are the things that concern us. These are the things we want legislation. And then you have <clears throat> people fighting it because, well, that's not... Yeah, it is, you know, Republican platform, it aligns with. Right. So it's a hard thing because we're floating away from the Republican values and then you're moving, you still got an R behind your name, right. but you're not plo- voting the R values. So that, I think, is is causing a little bit of conflict as well. So people yeah. are looking to replace some of the non-Republican thinking legislators. Maybe North Dakota needs three parties. Maybe they or do four, or three strong parties. Yeah. I, I guess there's probably several parties that are represented, but yeah, interesting stuff. Moving to let, actually, let's switch this up. Okay, let's have fun. <laughs> All right, 
Let's switch to some rapid fire questions. Oh, no. These are all setups. <sighs> yep. All trick questions. Yep. I'm ready. Shoot. Coffee or tea? Tea. Okay. Mountains or lake? That's a tough one. I'd go mountains. Mountains. S- s- this one's easy. As hard as that one was, city <laughs> life or country, country life? Country life. Definitely the country life. Yep. Are you someone that enjoys, this is something that's going to play in Bismarck. Are you someone that enjoys getting that phone call or that text message? Um, I don't know. Kind of a mix of each, I guess. Yeah. Quick, quick text is easy, you know. Right. And then an in-depth phone call is more explanatory or appropriate. Yeah, depending yeah. on where your heart is. So, Are you somebody, when you're eating food, that you like sweet or savory? Sweet and salty. <laughs> a little bit of both. A little bit of both. All right. Yeah. Do you enjoy the beautiful that we're just stepping into North Dakota summers or really in their own way, beautiful North Dakota winters? So I like North Dakota seasons because yeah. we are blessed. I don't, I don't think every state has for, I, I, I always say distinct seasons, but sometimes spring and fall are pretty short and right. we jump in. But just to see the changes, especially right now with the new life, the lambs, yeah. the calves, the, yeah, I, I think spring and fall are my favorite. All right. So we, we, you don't even get to. <laughs> I don't even like. Yeah. You don't like no, summer I like winter. summer and winter because, you know, that it, everything has its own blessing. Yeah, I love the, the going of summer, but the staying home of winter. I've been in North Dakota since 2008. And I probably really didn't care about the season changes when I was younger. But last fall was probably the most beautiful the gorgeous fall that I've leaves. ever been in yep. since I've moved to North Dakota. And I don't know, the wind must not have took the leaves off fast right. enough because we did it have was a there beautiful forever. one. Yeah, yeah, it was wonderful. All right, let's 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 go here. <laughs> Twitter or X or Facebook? Um, I'm not on Twitter or X, so Facebook. Facebook, okay, there you go. Um, whether it's a book or some other means, do you enjoy the more comedic route or the more dramatic route comedy mm, or drama drama probably okay home cooked meal or fine dining <laughs> so this is a trick question because who cooks the home cooked meal <laughs> That's right. you don't <laughs> so i like me. the fine dining because then i don't have to do the dishes but my yeah. home cooking is probably better <laughs> right absolutely <laughs> apple or android i don't like either no apple, apple. That's right. that I have, brings yeah. a whole nother question probably. Uh, the best part best part best thing best restaurant in north dakota ufta i don't know what's a favorite one that you really like i don't go out to eat a lot oh. yeah the k- that's culver's a, is right now the favorite of my children yeah culver's is solid that's, yeah that's, that's a good that's good on the go Grab some cores, and they may have a good scent down experience as well. And yeah, and flavor now, of the day mint. Oh yeah, that's that's <laughs> a good deal too. Um, now Minot has a Popeyes. Like things are happening. Yeah, I haven't tried that yet. Yeah, so either. Um, here's the last rapid fire one, and I it's a great segue question. So we always keep it last. What's the best thing in North Dakota? Best part of North Dakota? It's people, right? I don't know. I think the best part of North Dakota People's is a great answer. Yeah. But our history too. Yeah. I think of, and I compare it a lot to people coming here, immigrating here, moving yeah. here, you know, taking the train to Devil's Lake, walking to Denby, you know, setting up a house, struggling, you know, think of a winter with a tent or a wagon or a, even a tar paper shack, yeah. you know, the sturdy stock that we came from. So it does revolve back to the people right. and then how we came. And even, you know, just people who come here, the ones who stay and, you know, create a family and create a home, they're a little more sturdy too. Yeah. Some come and leave because they can't take it or, you know, the, they don't like the weather or the people or the, you know, area and we're out in the sticks right. or whatever. I agree. Keep, yep. That's what keeps these people great. It is. It is. So I appreciate the, the history of the state and the the people that created it. I think it's interesting you bring up the history. Hopefully that never gets lost. Seems like Correct. there's a lot of losing The further we get away, um, yeah, our changing history even. Yeah. Which, yeah. yeah. So yeah, that's something that should be prioritized by people. Let's talk about your platform. What are the top three things that are 
top of mind for you when you consider running for office? Some three issues that you really want to to have an impact on. Three issues. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, a lot of it, I think, with things going on in the world today, I want to stand on truth. And whether it's carbon, um, vaccines, mm-hmm. just different things, it's it gets to be so much more do it because I said so or do yeah. it because you're going to lose your coal or you're going to lose your job, you're going to lose, you're going to, you know, <laughs> whatever. It, it, we need to stand for truth and we need to stand and say no. And right. so that's what I'd like to be a voice for is just not going along to get along. I want to, I want to stand and fight for North Dakota. Uh, we are blessed beyond measure with, you know, food and fuel, people, yeah. resources that we have, the egg uh, and energy industries. And uh, should we have to follow federal regulations that, you know, have nothing to do with us and our people and our land and our, you know, it's mm-hmm. a lot of it's not based on truth. So right. based on money, it's based on getting Funding. a piece of the pie. Yeah. Yep. And which is hard because it's federal dollars coming in, but our federal deficit is, you yeah. know, abhorrent. It's, right. you know, like, where's the money coming from when it's not existent to begin with? Right. So do I want a piece of the pie? No, put the pie back in yeah. the cupboard <laughs> right, and, yeah. and, you know, fill the, Cupboard first, I guess. Exactly. I don't know. Like, actually, get pie in the cupboard. Yeah. <laughs> Where you like stop going to the neighbor's house and getting pie. It's not. <laughs> yeah. Stop. Yeah. So that and and that covers a lot of different areas, I guess. So, um, that's kind of. So right there, we're talking about budget. Um, and I mean, even during we've already talked about 2020. So you got those stimulus checks that go out, and you're like, well, I mean, if everybody's gonna get one, mine's <laughs> mine's well cash mine too, because you know, if we're gonna go down, let's go down together is a tough deal, but North Dakota obviously um, has been decent as far as our budget uh, as a statewide, but are, is there any concern with property taxes and all, and even income tax that have been a priority for some in this upcoming legislative session? So the end property tax measure, if that does get on the ballot, which I'm assuming it will or whatever, it's a big thing for a lot of people and nobody knows because it's never been done before. So now you're like, okay, well, but what, what will happen? And we don't know what will happen. Yeah. That's one of those things that we're going to have to tackle. You know, we're going right. to have to just put on the uniform and get in there and, and figure it out. Yeah. So that's one of those things. I'm not going to, I'm not going to naysay it and d- say it's not going to come and we can't do it because if the people pass it, we're going to do it. You know, so, it's. All right. So this is a really interesting thing. And again, question I've asked before, but I, I'm really interested in this one. Is it being done properly by being an, uh, basically an amendment to the constitution or should it be brought up through the legislature again? So did the legislature have a chance to do it? Absolutely. Did they? Absolutely not. Not. They didn't address it. They didn't start it. They didn't make way. Right. So that is when the people say, okay, you guys, you know, we've given you a shot. We're going to do this and then you're going to have to deal with it. Right. So should we have done it at a legislative level? Probably. And it's hard because... North Dakota has an abundance of money, mm-hmm. but the more you have, the more you spend. Do we need to spend it on some of the things that we sh- are spending it on? Mm-hmm. I would say no, because right. I am a I'm I'm tight in my home. I'm tight with my children. I mean, like, I, no, we don't need the fluff and programs and incentives and. A lot of it is, oh, we need businesses in North Dakota, and right now we need people to work the businesses we have. So we need to cut back on the incentives for out-of-state businesses to come and start something because we don't have employees for the, the the businesses right now that are have now hiring signs out. Right. So I I don't see, <laughs> and does the government have any business? I mean, what was it established for? To promote businesses in North Dakota? Oh, yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> to create, yeah. To create opportunity. But that comes from us. That comes yeah. from you and me. And if we sink, we sink. If we swim, we swim. And supply and demand, you know, there's all sorts of reasons that. Right. So getting back to property tax, could we replace some of that, all of it, in other methods besides landowners and property owners and assessments? I believe we could just shift and move and and cut some areas. I think it could be replaced fairly easily. Another issue that has been brought up often is that of the southern border <laughs> and and the northern border <laughs> you know that's that's a great point that gets overlooked because on the national feed it's in everybody's mind the southern border 
and there should be concern, but there's not a lot of thought given to the northern border, but we're right next to Canada, who has a little bit more uh, open immigration policy probably than what, what we have, and that affects us more than what maybe we want to admit sometimes. Does North Dakota need to worry about our borders, um, or should that become a priority? I think we should worry about our borders and I think it should be a priority. And it's hard because once again, when we were homesteaded or whatever, you had um, people move up to the Canadian border and North Dakota border and, and they have land on both sides. So they're farming both sides. But I think that there's going to be a time when you're going to either have to choose to go through the port to farm and, you know, or have whatever, uh, right. quant- yeah, shop on both sides with your, because just like Texas, I think we're going to have to have some security of some kind if we want to keep it <clears throat> on the up and up. I don't know. Because if I go across the border, I have to show my ID. Oh, I have yeah. to, I mean, even to go to the Peace Gardens, you know, you just go into the middle and you can't get back in without, you know, proof. And right. I'm a born and bred U.S. citizen. So should there be concern? Yes. And I don't know. Right. Right now, this is what's happening is horrible. I keep telling people, you go put my phone number on some of those kids' clothes and send them to me. I don't, you can't just infiltrate like that. And right. it's, it's, I don't know what's going to happen, but absolutely, I think we should be concerned. So what I, the follow-up to that in my mind is what can North Dakota do about it? I've heard some things we need to, you know, because what the borders typically comes drugs. That's been one of the major things that have been, uh, coming through the borders and in North Dakota, we've seen a rise in fentanyl. We've mm-hmm. seen a rise in other drugs. And so our, cr- our enforcement of crime is a little bit weak in some of those areas. What are some of the things that can be done um, to help p- prevent the, the, the uh, crisis that's happening with the borders, but by North Dakota, because we're not next to the Southern border, right? We are next to the Northern border, as you pointed out. Yep. And I don't know, because that's why I'm like, okay, call Trump and see if we can get part of his wall built up and just, <laughs> you know, get it set up so we can't. And because everything leads to something else, right? The drugs, the, the illegal truth. immigration, what are we going to do with them? How are we going to, and, and they can't get jobs. They can't hardly get housing without an address or, you know, right. some basis of, of starting. And so there's a lot that's going to have to go through and we're going to have to deal with. And I don't know what to do with drugs in our state. And we need stronger penalties for, you know, convicted right. dealers and, and try to shut it down. But we need more education. For I, And I think our, our youth are getting educated because they're seeing what's happening to other people who are, you know, dropping dead from a fentanyl overdose and, and not even at lace. It's not even an overdose, you know, it's an accident yeah. and it's scary. And when I grew up, we didn't have that problem. So it, it's, it's hard to say, can we solve all the problems? I don't have a magic wand, yeah. but I think we need to start tackling some of that. And, um, my husband and I did foster care for years, you know, and, and every single child that came into our home had, you know, was connected to drugs. And so how do you stop that? And how do you make it an addiction? You know, right? They love their children. It's just that the addiction is strong. It's difficult, and mm-hmm. there has been some state programs to help with some of that stuff, which brings an interesting dilemma uh, because that also is a budgetary item mm-hmm. um, where there's a lot of money being spent on that. Um, and so should it be a government issue, or should that be addressed at the local, you know, s- smaller areas and at the right. church and at the, you know, because it's hard. It, it it's hard to confront somebody and say, you know. How yeah. do you, how do you catch somebody early enough too, and right. how do you take care of that? Because sometimes you're enabling, if you're helping yep. them in other ways, you know, I'm babysitting your children while you're out getting high. Right. Yeah. And so am I helping you or enabling you? Right. Yeah. And so I don't, I, yeah. Difficult item. Difficult. You mentioned, uh, educating kids, um, to that. And what that brings up an interesting thing in, in my town, uh, there's billboards that are educating and they're <laughs> put up there by Planned Parenthood. And they are very aggressive billboards, in my opinion, um, talking about uh, private issues. Um, is, Which, yeah, go ahead. So, and, and I think a lot of our um, youth, uh, well, gender issues, uh, uh, abortion issues have been hijacked because the message they're sending is a baby's an inconvenience. Yeah. You're going to ruin your life. 
And babies are not inconveniences. They're a blessing, you know, and sometimes your life needs to be saved. Sometimes you need that child to pull you out of your self-centeredness and abusive or, you know, whatever you're dealing with because you do you do stop and focus on something else and that child. And so sometimes it's a lifesaver. And so I think we need to educate our youth that a child is not a curse. It's not an inconvenience. A child could be a great blessing. And that kind of comes from everything. Because even in the Christian home, if you have an unwed teenage daughter, even the parents are shamed. But the fact is, is it's too late yeah. to change. So now you need to embrace the life that's within. Right. And, and then promote, how are they going to do this? Because now we need, to, we need to help you out. Because now you're going to have this baby and you're going to... If you want to go to college, you still can. If you want to do this, you still can. So we need to come alongside. But I think the education needs to start younger and say, you know what? There's a time when your body's going to change. You're going to need to embrace that. There's a chance you could get pregnant. There's a chance you could get a girl pregnant. And if you become a parent, it's one of the best things that could happen in your life. Yeah. It's not going to ruin your life. How young should that education begin? Boy, I don't know. Because yeah, <laughs> even now, you know, puberty starts a lot earlier now than I, and maybe it wasn't, I just didn't pay attention when I was growing up either. Yeah. So when do you start? But embracing how you were created. Yeah. I'm a firm believer. God created us for a purpose and he has a plan. So going with that, from the time they're young, you need to tell, you know, children that God has a plan for your life and he's going to lead and guide you through it. Absolutely. And whatever happens. And the hard part is, is that there, you know, when a little boy says he wants to be a fireman when he's 20, I don't say, oh yeah, no, 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 no. You right. at five, you said you were going to be a fireman. So you're going to be a fireman. Guess what, buddy? Yeah, yeah. No other options. So right. when they're at five and they're playing around and I mean, no, you don't have to be a fireman for the rest of your life, but you can be a fireman for today. I mean, right. yeah. yeah, absolutely. I'll help you out. Absolutely. My, my uh, little boy runs around with a baby doll sometimes. Which is, it's fine. He's going to be a father someday. He's going to be a father. Yeah. Exactly. That's yep. the point that I was bringing home. Um, how, how strict should the abortion laws be? Are they strict enough? Are they strict enough? I am, I. It's a, it's a difficult question. It's a difficult question, especially with your background or my background. Um, I do not believe a child should, or uh, yeah, a child yeah. should be killed in case of incest or rape because I think the perpetrator should be punished, not yeah. the child with a death sentence. Um, once again, you know, one trauma, does another trauma heal that first trauma? I'm not sure. I, I would say no. And having mm -hmm. a baby could save a life. Right. You know, there's some of those things that you have something else to think about. Absolutely. So, And sometimes that's what we need is to, to get our mind off our problems and, 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 and move on. So, and I was, you know, visited with a lady and she was, you know, life, the life of a mother. And I don't know if the life of the mother is in jeopardy, then the life of the child is in jeopardy as well already. So is it, uh, there, there's so many issues that they're throwing out. They're more like scare tactics Absolutely. instead of like, yeah, because do I, am I concerned about young girls ordering the abortion pill, getting it in the mail and suffering in their bathroom, uh, or not getting help when they need to, and then suffering for, you know, years after that with what they did, yeah. because nobody knows exactly how each one is going to affect that girl. Right. Right. If she's bleeding out in the bathroom, or if she's, you know, up and working out the next day, yeah. you just got to, each one's different. So I, hmm, it's a tough one for me, but I'm for life Absolutely. all the way. And if you have to kill it, I believe that's murder. So what do you believe should be the number one threat to North Dakota right now? Mm. Apathy. In inside. In it's not an external threat. It's an internal threat. I Apathy. think, well, it's, it's as North Dakotans and even as Republicans, yeah. we want to sit back. We live the good life. I mean, yeah. we are in God's country. You can go out and see the sky, the stars, and enjoy it all. Um the wind is not so enjoyable, but it's yeah. here. And because um, going around visiting with people, you know, do you vote in the primary? Do you vote in the general election? No, no. <laughs> no, just no. I just never have. I don't want to. And I'm like, yeah. but so why? Because right. we live the good life and we think yeah. it's not going to affect us. And I, you discuss issues with people and that, well, that's not going to happen in North Dakota, right. you know, but it is. So it's, it's. 
Uh, apathy is a great answer. I don't know. So, so that's why I'm a grassroots activist and I'm trying to get people involved and we need to know what's happening. You know, yeah. you need to be involved. You, re- you mentioned something in there as well. Um, it's not happening in North Dakota. It never will. Does we have the first amendment. It's a, the constitution is a great thing, but are there areas that need to specific issues that need to be addressed? Kind of like they tried to be, and some of them were in the last legislative session with pronoun bill um, and other things like that. There's certain issues where we need further legislation on well, um, <laughs> to protect sure. pastors and and whoever else it might be. Yeah. I, and yes, I would say yes. I don't. And a lot of times it's like, okay, do we need more bills or do we need less bills? There's because a lot of bills you get right. It's it's hard to say. But when 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 they were introducing, you know. Uh, men participating in women's sports. Mm. Oh, that won't happen, but we won't get any, you know, national tournaments here or whatever. And we should have stood our ground. (laughs) We don't want your national tournament if you're going to have a guy in a swimsuit competing with women. So sometimes we we do need a little bit stand more for truth, which brings me back to the beginning or whatever. And then we need need to put our money where our mouth is and say no, you know, Mm -hmm. like, no. Mm -mm. Especially when it comes to our children. Right, Mm -mm. yeah. Social issues is an interesting thing for sure. Well, it's been a fun interview so far. <laughs> we've we've pretty much uh, covered everything, I think. Good. <laughs> <laughs> it's been great. Anything that's top of mind that you really want to throw out there? Um, I, once again, I just, I mean, encourage you to vote and get involved and find out. And if you don't know what your legislators or the ones that are running for legislation stand for, I would reach out to them. I would, I would appreciate it you know, a text, a call, yeah. an email, whatever. And, and, and say, because unless you tell me what you're concerned about, I don't really know what I'm fighting for either. So some of those issues are, you know, we need to, we need to be more involved at every level. And that's not just the state, it's the county, it's the city, it's the school boards, library boards. Um, yeah. City council. Absolutely. If somebody so. wants to support you, how can they do so? So, uh, Zach Lessig, Pat Buckmer, and I were endorsed at our District 6 um, endorsing convention. So District 6 is, you can send a check to the District 6 Republicans or mm-hmm. e- e- any, yeah, me personally or whatever. But I've been, Absolutely. we've been running everything through the district. So very good. And you're obviously the primaries on June 11th. So that's where uh, we need your vote. Votes. And this is the first time in years that, you know, you've had more than two people to vote in for two spots. Right now we have four people running for house, two spots, and we have yep. two people running for the one Senate seat. So we have an exciting race, I guess. I'll be exciting. Mm-hmm. I think in District 40 they, they had an abundance of candidates. It's 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 neat to see. It is. I think it's I think it's a good thing. Yeah. And that's what we need. We need people involved and we need to mm-hmm, get out there and especially with term limits. Yeah. We're going to need people. I said maybe if I don't get in this year, I'll be there in 8 years. So Absolutely. Definitely. Well, thank you for coming on today. You bet. Thanks, Jonathan. Absolutely. This has been another edition of the Dakotans Election Central, where we are continuing our comprehensive coverage of the 2024 North Dakota election cycle. I'm Jonathan Starr. Be sure to go to mydakotan.com, click on Election Central. There you'll see a feed of just wonderful interviews, just like the one you watched. You can watch them all. You can follow us on Facebook, like, and subscribe on YouTube. Become part of the Dakotan community. I thank you very much for watching this video, and have a great day.